If you're not satisfied with the status quo, if you want to kill the competition, if you're ready to grow your business at massive levels, I want to take three days to spend time with an exclusive group of people, entrepreneurs, business owners, business managers, coaches, and experts, and show you how to get a competitive edge in your business using social media, using e-commerce, using sales, salespeople, cold calls, follow-up, and a sales cycle and a business cycle that I guarantee you will 10x your business in 2018. I'm doing this at the Diplomat Hotel. I'm going to spend three days with you, and we're going to focus on a plan that 10x is your business in 2018. Power players, I have Sharon Lecter with me today. If you don't know who Sharon <laughs> is, think, think and grow rich for women. Think and grow rich three feet of gold. Think, save wisely and spend happily. Outwitting the devil. These are all... Uh, Napoleon Hill, she literally took some Napoleon Hill's books that were lost and brought them out. But also think Rich Dad, Poor Dad, CEO of Rich Dad, Poor Dad for 10 years. Millions of books have been sold because of Sharon Lecter. Uh, she has literally changed an industry by herself. And she is one of the most um, sought after, most respected women and entrepreneurs in the space of self-help. Before we get into who you are, let's just talk about the woo-woo. Oh, all right. Okay. Woo-woo. Because, because you and I, she came in the office today. We were, she came in the office today and she's like, you know, we have a lot. We're really different. You want to just talk about how you oh, see sure, us as different, sure. but we're also counting backgrounds. Yeah. So we're both very commonsensical. Right. Uh, I think you're more gregarious than I am, right? And your ability to sell and to be yeah. in your own power is you have more ability to do that than I do. I'm a little more humble. You know, oh wow! I'm a little more humble. Okay. Um, and I'm wor I'm working on that, but at the same time, you know, I'm I, I, power can be quiet. Yeah. And I'm kind yeah. of the quiet power. Very very powerful <laughs> space that you you carry. So it's you know, it's something that for many many years I was fine being the one controlling everything and being in the back Behind office because yeah. being on camera and in the lights was never on my bucket list. Uh huh. But in the last few years, you know, I realized when I stood in my own power that by stepping out and doing this, I can impact more people in a positive way. So let's talk about, where do you want to start? You want to start with you, your comeback that we talked about, like what, what happened in the last couple of years? Or do you want to start with how Sharon even got here? Like, why Sharon Lecter? Where, well, you grow it's up? your show, Grant. Where Where'd you grow up? Where'd you grow up? <laughs> I grew up, actually I was a Navy brat, my dad was in the military, but he retired and I moved to Florida in Orlando when I was eight. So okay. I grew up in Florida. Okay, and what, brothers and sisters? I have an older sister, she's four years older, just the two of us. Okay, and then you're, you grew up middle class, poor? Lower, lower middle class, my dad uh -huh. had a third grade education, but he went on to teach the engineering school for the Navy. Oh wow. Totally self-taught. My mom had a high school grad diploma and ended up owning her own um, beauty salon. My dad owned real estate. Uh -huh. We'd have to go clean it up. And, and I said, I swear I'd never own rental real estate. Uh -huh. um, now I I do it all the time and tell other people they need to do it, just yeah. like you. So, yeah, But yeah. it was like growing up, the last thing I ever wanted to do is become an entrepreneur. Yeah. So, um, what, what was the message at your, at your home at eight years old here in Orlando? Work hard. Work, work hard. hard. Okay. You know, to feel good about yourself, to do a good day's work. Uh -huh. And every night my dad would ask me, have you added value to someone's life today? Mm -hmm. And that's something, he's been gone for 12 years, but um, I still ask myself that. Mm -hmm. Have you done something to add value to someone's life? And, and when did you, like, even before 10, was there something where, like, you wanted, was, was it add value? What, when, when did you want to be an, a helpful person? Because you spent a career helping people. Like whether it's education, I didn't mention she sits on the President's Advisory Council for Financial Literacy with Bush and Obama. So when did you have this thing like, I want to help? Um, I think it, it came as how I was raised with mm -hmm. my parents. You know, my, they'd give their shirt off their back to help somebody else. So I think it was just something that I learned in a household that was very kind. We never... Um, never turn somebody away at Thanksgiving. I still don't, uh -huh. you know, and I don't want anybody to ever be, a, you know, alone. So it's something that is uh, just part of, of, the, of the nature of who I am, I guess. But it's also, I think, um, the more you give, the more you get. So, mm -hmm. you know, once, once you start doing it and you realize 
um, the the grace you get back from giving, and it doesn't have to be financial. But you know? does your sister, she's mm -hmm. uh, your sister, young or older? She's older. Okay, so did she like did she spend a career helping people like you have? Yes, but totally opposite. Oh wow! So the, my our parents' goal was that we would um, get college degrees and go get a a corporate job and graduate and have her pension, right? Uh -huh. And so she stayed in that corporate environment and I went off to public accounting expecting to become a partner in, in Coopers and Libran in Atlanta. I was uh -huh. only the fourth woman ever hired in the Southeast uh -huh. and I was destined to be a partner. I was on the fast track and at 25 I woke up one day and said, this is crap. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. if I'm going to work this hard, I'm going to work for myself because it uh -huh. was, you know, long hours in mm -hmm. public accounting and I had a client offer to uh, had me come with him. He was investing in a company with new technology. And I sat down on my bed in my apartment in Atlanta with a yellow pad and did pros and cons. And Yeah, the, the old Ben Franklin, huh? Yeah, didn't help a bit. I could argue both sides. Yeah, right. Yeah, but then my She's hand... She's an accountant. Yeah, I'm an accountant. And then I wrote across, my hand just kind of wrote across, why not? And that's kind of been my philosophy, Grant, is why not do something? Mm -hmm. Why not take the path less traveled? Why not find something, a problem to solve, or yeah. need to serve. And so it's a very entrepreneurial mindset. Even if you are an executive in a company, you can still have an entrepreneurial mindset. And that's where you step outside your comfort zone. That's where you find opportunities. That's where you find things to build. In, in the land of why not. Yes, uh -huh. why I not. like that, I like that. Well, when you ask why, you're waiting for somebody to give you a reason. Uh -huh. When you ask why not, right. it comes from within. So you, you did the uh, college thing. Would you recommend, I mean, just to cut to this, because this is everybody's question today, would you recommend <laughs> college today for, for a majority of America? I think college is an excellent training to our kids. I think uh -huh. are, I was just with college kids two days ago. My alma mater invited me back. So I'm gonna tell, I was so impressed with these young people. So today you hear all this about how you know, the millennials, kid, the, yeah. Yeah, the millennials, or they're actually getting older now. So it's like the next Millennial generation. Plus, yeah, yeah they're, they're, you know, they're, they expect everything to be handed to them. The kids I met this week were incredible. Yeah, I'm yeah, very yeah. optimistic about the future. Yeah. But I will say, I wholeheartedly say my success is due to my accounting degree uh -huh. and my experience in public accounting where I saw a lot of companies do things right uh -huh. and a lot of companies do things wrong. And so the more education, I do think our kids are a little less mature yeah, because uh -huh. there's just so many things happening well, I, in their and lives. I pick up the chicken eggs now. You know? yeah. I go to the store to get them. This is Sharon Lecter, okay? When we come back for Power Players, we're gonna talk about what she did with uh, rich Dad, Poor Dad, millions. How many millions of books are you responsible for? Well, at, by now, I think we, we well, 26 million when I left. 26 so. million books. Even if you made a dollar. We're going to find out how much money she made, too, okay? Stay with us. You're on Power Players. Revamp Bullfrog is here for 2018 to service you and your business to the highest levels of success. More communication, no drop calls, better integration, faster response time. Kill the desk phone and take your office mobile. Sign up for a free trial right now at bullfrog.net. That's bullfrog.net and join the world's number one telecommunications company, bullfrog.net. Or email ben at bullfrog.net or benrife at gmail.com. Email ben at bullfrog.net or benrife at gmail.com. There is only one company to work for in the smart home industry, Skyline Security. Right now is looking for the best of the Grant Cardone following to join their team and expand financially and professionally. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Labeled by Inc. 5000 as the fastest growing company for the last two years in a row, you get to protect families, grow your wealth, and join a team of top producers. Skyline is looking for great people. Go to joinskyline.com. That's joinskyline.com to get started on a brand new 10x career path. Go to joinskyline.com to register. Are you ready to tap into the e-commerce revolution? Making $60,000 a day may seem unreal, but there's a proven method you can use to get there. It takes time, it takes dedication, it takes effort, and most of all, it takes resilience. Coach Gianni is now partnered with Gabriel Beltran, and together they are using the Ecom Millionaire formula to help increase your monthly revenue. Using his Ecom Millionaire system, you will sell products online, get step by step guidelines on how to market and use Facebook ads, and learn how to make millions with e commerce. As an official platinum sponsor of the 10X Growth Con, check out the MillionaireMastermind.com. That's the MillionaireMastermind.com.
Hey, welcome back to Power Players. Grant Cardone here with Sharon Lecter, super power player, Sharon Lecter. I don't get enough women in this chair. You don't. That's now, true. Why I agree, not? I agree why with that. Why am I not? Why am I not? And sometimes when I get the women here, they're talking about the woo-woo. And I don't mean that woo-woo. Not me. I mean, no. So, so uh, we started on the woo-woo. We didn't, we didn't finish. You, you don't like a lot of the uh, secret... Just talk to yourself. It's going to be fine. Um, think well, I believe, it, I believe in the law of attraction. Uh -huh. Napoleon Hill first wrote about it in 1919. Mm -hmm. And the title of the book, Think and Grow Rich, makes you think it's woo-woo. But it's not. He talks mm -hmm. about going the extra mile, dress yeah. for yeah. success, you yeah. know, doing does. what you need to do. I mean, it's all about, Very specific about you work what to hard. Do. Yeah. Now, the movie and the, the, the book, The Secret, which, of course, was hugely successful. You can't argue with it's a success. But it almost implied that if you just sit here and think good thoughts, yeah. the money's going to rain down on you. And that's not a good philosophy. Mm -hmm. We, You and I both work very hard. We want something, we go after it, we understand. We yeah, need to I surround have ourselves. Interesting right in front of me. I, I have notes for sharing, <laughs> and then I got my money right underneath it because <laughs> I'm an accountant. I, I, it, it, like, how important has accounting been, and you said this, you mentioned this before the break, to you being able to help Kiyosaki actually build a business? Because I think a lot of people don't know that you were the one that helped Kiyosaki build that out. Yes, I was. And I think um, it's, it's hugely important to understand the numbers. The numbers tell a story. Uh -huh. And people, you know, a lot of times people are only interested in the top line. And when the top line goes up, they don't, they don't pay attention to the expense categories. And you need to understand every aspect of your financial and understand that when you have things getting out of whack. Mm -hmm. And if you don't, as a CEO, you can't, Abdicate, you know, can't give somebody else that authority. Because, right, you can't delegate that. Right, you know, the, you have to maintain, you can delegate the, the debits and credits to someone else, but you need to make sure you understand where you are financially. At the all entrepreneur times. should know yes. about their money. Yes. So just Constantly. hiring a treasury person or having your wife or your husband be the, the accountant. Right. You're okay. saying. That's okay. They can Co do all the, the numbers, collect the data, but you need to see that financial. Uh -huh. And for me, it was every week. Mm -hmm. I needed to see it every week, and uh -huh. you know, it's like, and I always. It, well, you're it, you're less interested in your money than I am because I see this every day. Every day I get one. <laughs> Sometimes twice a day. Send it to me again. Well, I people would be just amazed with me because I knew I I always signed the checks. Uh -huh. and, you know, it was like we're the rich dad the whole time I was there, and so I always knew how much money was in the bank, mm -hmm. just because I'm an I'm an accountant. Well, you're responsible, you know? and it yeah. sounds like you're, that's what your dad said. Hey, work hard, add value, mm -hmm. and if you can't pay for it. How can you work hard and right. continue to add value? Yeah, and even when we wanted to do something new in, in Rich Dad, we could have written a check for something, but if we wanted to do something new, we said, okay, so we have to have to find a new revenue stream to generate the revenue to do it. So, so talk about that, because yeah. I think a lot of people think, let me just take it from what we're doing. Yeah, or borrow it. Right. right. Yeah, and I think part of it is understanding the, the basics. You know, most people get into um, businesses and they become solopreneurs. So they own a job, not a business. Mm -hmm. And that's really the, the basis of, of, of what I teach and the fact that you need that asset, but it's not going to be an asset if, you're, if you can't have other people supporting you, making it successful. You need the right structure. You need the right systems. It's a whole lot easier to manage systems than people. We were talking mm -hmm. about that too. You know, people get crazy. If you can manage the system, then the people understand what their responsibilities are. And so to be able to scale, you can have a successful business and burn out because you can't scale. That happens so many times on these people that go on Shark Tank or they're on QVC. Small companies get this opportunity and they they're, they're, they want 100,000 units and so they go borrow right. the money from everybody and they ship the units and they don't all sell and they get shipped back and they're upside down mm -hmm. because they haven't used good sense on how to scale their business and how to be able to build it. What do you see, because I know you're doing, the, you're going to come out with this new series about Play Big, mm -hmm. okay? So you're talking about scaling systems, why is it important for people to go big? Or should they scale it down and play a more, a safer game? Well, playing safe means that you are, you're, you're not recognizing opportunities that might be right there in front mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. My philosophy is, um, and this whole new brand that I'm launching is um, play big, be mm -hmm. number one in your field, mm -hmm. okay? Live your legacy, don't wait till you're dead. Live your legacy every day and um, create maximum impact. You know, it, an extra, when you, I'm sure that you teach this, I haven't heard you, but I'm sure you do. When it's real estate, all right, 
you're going to go the same amount of effort for a $1 million property as you are a $10 million. Yeah, that's right. But the profit looks a whole lot better on the $10 million, right? As long yeah. as the numbers work. And so the issue is why not create maximum impact? Mm -hmm. And part of it is when we did the talk, children's talking books, as I said, it was one of the first companies that I was with when we went global. We aligned, you know, it was a new technology. So parents this, were- This is what you when? Back in 80, 87. And you were doing a children's electronic children. workbook. Uh, yeah, book. yeah. And trying to sell that when Barnes and Noble and, and Books a Million were the, at the height of their power. Right. And they wanted nothing with noise. This was before the current day Barnes and yeah, Nobles. Yeah. Little old ladies behind the cash register say, get out of here. We don't right. want anything that makes noise. Right. And so we said, well, how can we get parents to trust us? No computers, no iPads. No, none of that. There's no phones at the time. No internet, believe yep. it or not. Yeah. So in 87, and we said, how can we make sure we grow this? And so mm -hmm. we aligned the power of association aligned with Disney, Sesame Street, Warner Brothers. Yeah, that's what and I'm so as a company, we started off our first year with a million in sales. That makes a lot of people happy, right? Well, the second year was nine million, then we went to 23 million, and we sold the company on track to 52 million. And that was because we had that power of association, immediate uh -huh. trust. We had to pay big licensing fees, but that was okay, because it helped us get that product globally. And then you made a comment a few minutes ago about when we had a new idea, to start a new business, we always, and I don't know if it was you or Kiyosaki, but said, hey, we gotta find a new way to pay for this. We both agreed to it. In fact, uh -huh. we started the company out of my home. We sold our first million books of Rich Dad out of my house. And we, I said, we, you know, we, my copy machine died. We needed to buy a much nicer, much sturdier copy machine. And we said, okay, so what are we gonna do? I mean, we could have written the check right there, each of us. I the easy they, thing would be to just write it out of the yeah, yeah. checking account or something. We said, okay, account. so that's $1,000. Where are we gonna, you know, what event can we go to to raise the cat? It was just, a, it was uh, almost a game to us. Who's just got my money? Businesses like games, right? Yeah, yeah. Other people's money. Yeah, let's, yeah. You know, let's fund it through other people's but money. But other people's money doesn't always mean debt. It meant, yeah. hey, we're gonna use energy work, hard work, you talked about That's your dad That's my husband's you. book, Other People's Money. Uh -huh. And it's about other people's money, other people's time, other people's resources. Yeah, but it doesn't mean a loan. Go get no. a loan from somebody else. It no. means collaboration. Go knock on the door. Collaboration, you need something. Add you, value. You find somebody that's already in that geographic location and they can take what you do and spread it in their world. It's win-win. See, now this is where a lot of people say other people's money always means I gotta go to the no. bank. No. Or the value of other people's money is I get other people invested. But like I started my first business and I told my wife this last night. She's like, w w you didn't use other people's money. I said, oh yeah, I did. I got investors. And she's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I knocked on a door. I sold a product. They gave me money and I invested that money in my business. Mm -hmm. So what do you see people doing today that's not correct? Like that's. Well, I see a lot of people when they're just starting their, their company, they're giving away 50 50% of it and they don't even have a viable business model. And so they're, they're, they're never going to really be the captain of their own ship. Uh -huh. And they're bringing in money, or they're bringing in too much money early on uh -huh. and giving up too uh -huh. much of their company. I'd much rather you take a, 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 like a, almost a line of credit, bring in a small amount, get to the next level, have a benchmark, then bring in some more uh -huh. so that you only bring it in because the value of your company is going up as you go forward. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, in, in a year, the value of your company may be up 10 times, so you're not gonna give up as much for that same million dollars. So they would go to their uncle, mm -hmm. typically family first, and say, hey, I need to borrow some money, I got mm -hmm. an idea, I wanna borrow 100 grand, and you're saying they're either borrowing too soon or they're- Or from the wrong person. <laughs> or, or, or they're giving too much away, right? right? Because they're gonna have to go back and do another round. Right. And it's very important to have it in writing, make sure uh -huh. everybody's expectations are the same. And, and the biggest thing is, can you do it without giving up a piece of your business? Yeah. Can you do it by doing a license agreement mm -hmm. where it's a, or a, joint, a joint venture so that you maintain 100% ownership in your company, but you're doing collaboration? There are companies out there today, you know, we used to be very competitive when I first started my career. I have major competitors now that are working together on initiatives. They're not giving each other interest in their companies. And that's why other pe we talk about other people's resources. When I'm right. growing Rich Dad, I didn't want 5,000 employees. So when I said we want to do Rich Dad coaching, I found the best coaching company and I went and I said, okay, let's do a deal. They manage all the people. They set up the systems. The phone gets answered Rich Dad. I uh -huh. have total quality control over what's being taught and, and how it's being managed. And I don't have to worry about um, employees. 
And so you, I'm using their resources, their people, their time. And yeah, they're getting paid for it, but I gladly pay them because I'm getting a royalty check. Yeah, and you had 15 employees at that time, yeah. right? With we had 5,000 5, people working for us around the world at yeah. different, different publishing companies, coaching, infomercials. So why do my own infomercial? I went to mm -hmm. Time Life at the time, number one in the, you know, in the world. They did the Rich Dad infomercial. Would, would uh, infomercials, would they work mm -hmm. today? Um, they they are working today. Uh -huh. I, I'm surprised by it, actually. I don't, you know, we fast forward through that yeah, part yeah. of the TV, but um, they, there are many that are still working. I, think, I don't think you have the kind of big hits that we used to back yeah. in the day. When you look at when you look at what, what, the way you guys scaled, okay, mm -hmm. for for 15 employees, five thousand. Was that your idea or was it his? Oh, to, to, mine, always mine. My husband is uh -huh. is a licensing expert, so the whole strategy about building the talking books was utilizing licensing mm -hmm. with the major companies. And then in building Rich Dad, I wanted to use licensing, again, to make it easier to manage. If, if you wouldn't have done Rich Dad, what would you have done? I would have done something in financial literacy. I was very, mm -hmm. very dedicated to making sure. I'm, I was livid that we're not teaching our kids about money in school. I'm mm -hmm. still livid today. Uh -huh. But that was I was already working in the school system when I met him. And and what is the what is it that the I got a lot of people that are young very young following me so mm -hmm. what is it they need to know about money that that either they need to correct or they need to add data to, to well you're in the driver's seat and so you get out of school you get a job you have money coming in and expenses going out that's the income statement money in money out right you fall in love you end up getting married or move move in with someone you got two incomes you got cars you got the big screen TV you got debt right. You don't think about the asset. That part's still bit empty. And you are your only asset. And that's the problem. When you're your only asset, if you end up having a crisis, um, you're going to be in a world of hurt. And so the sooner and earlier you can start buying, building, or creating assets, mm -hmm. um, the sooner you'll be able to create financial freedom. Because financial freedom is in when income from your assets exceed your monthly expenses, you're financially free. And, and what do you consider an asset? Because I think a lot of people think that a house is an asset. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, in Rich Dad Poor Dad, we clearly state your house is not an asset. Uh -huh. Because in essence, assets put money in your pocket, mm -hmm. liabilities take money out of your pocket. But when you look at it from an investor's eye, all mm -hmm. right, because there's cash flow properties and there's appreciation properties. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I try to keep it as simple as possible, Grant. I say income properties. And you're not talking about real estate properties. You're no. not, a book is a property. Right. Cardone University right. is a assets property. Assets uh -huh. put money in your pocket. And sometimes you have assets like collectibles. In fact, I had somebody call into my show yesterday asking yeah. about their comic books. I go, that's, that's an appreciable asset uh -huh. that you hope will continue growing in value. But think of it as income producing assets help you build your wealth. Most people hold their wealth in in Income producing assets. Yes. Say, say it again just so, because this is where people get lost and they just want to slow it down. And Income producing assets are things like businesses that are generating revenue for you, um, real estate, rental real estate. And then that, that, that income producing property business would be more valuable the less dependent it is upon a personality. That's exactly right. Yes. Um, also, you have um, intellectual property. Mm -hmm. All right. So, for instance, um, 10X was your creation. You mm -hmm. created it. You wrote the book. That becomes an asset. That's selling while you're sleeping, mm -hmm. right? And so that's an asset that's out there generating revenue. And it's online courses generating revenue. 30 years ago, the Fortune 500 companies, it was 80% hard assets and 20% intangible, uh -huh. right? It's the flip today. Uh -huh. Over 80% of the value of Fortune 500 companies is intangible. Wow, wow. And less than 20% is hard assets. And that means we've leveled the playing field mm -hmm. so that you as a small business I don't business have to go owner, manufacture. Uh, uh, um, it's not about railroads. Like right. back in the 30s, it was railroads. It yes. was oil refineries. It's big, expensive uh, what's the word? Intensive, uh, asset intensive. Mm -hmm. Infrastructure and businesses exactly. and property, plant and equipment. Required debt, a lot yes. of debt. Investors, you were forced to go get investors. Yes, and it took a long time to get uh -huh. up and running. Because they're and heavy. It's yeah. a big, big, heavy. Yes, and today I go, if you have an idea, don't try and build a pro property, plant and equipment. Find somebody that's in that business and go mm -hmm. pay them to do it for you. You you have Matt, you have brought up this association thing three or four times. When you were in my office, you brought it up a couple mm -hmm. times. It is where I have failed the biggest. Like, I didn't associate and collaborate 
What's a tip, and then I'm going to get back to this cash, these income properties, but what's a tip for people to collaborate? We're associating right now. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, so because my, I think a lot of people think they got to, they have to go work out work for themselves. Do it and on like, their own. And this that's is good. A that's mistake. why school school teaches us you have to do it on your own. Uh-huh. And and I say you know that that's part of the problem of school when you when you cooperate in school they call it cheating. All right, yep, but yep, the world right. of biz, the world of business is a team player, uh-huh. and you may not have outside associations. But I look around and you have one fabulous team. Mm-hmm. So you've got the association down right, surrounding yourself with the right people. Yeah. All right. But you can also associate with other brands. And that's how mm-hmm. we did in the talking book with Disney, Warner Brothers, with Rich Dad, we did Time Life and Time Warner Books. But power of association is huge. You have yeah. your passion and your talent. That's who and, you and, are. But I think some personalities are better equipped to do that like like you would be much better like i'm just not a, i'm not personality equipped to collaborate to go make those associations like i can't even imagine myself going to disney and talking to them but i met a few people on your team who could yeah right exactly and it doesn't have to be you grant yeah, yeah. well and it the could be somebody may outside have your the name company on it too. but you've got right. a team that's capable of doing that right okay so good that's good because really collaboration and association is another in asset your Income 10x flow. concept can uh-huh. any corporation in America can benefit from it. Right, right. And you've got those associations. Yeah, you've yeah. done, and that's how you grew so quickly. I mean, you've yeah. got those. Those are all powers of association. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let's go back to this thing because this is really this is where I love to live. The cash flow properties, mm-hmm. income producing properties, intellectual properties, online courses. What else is there? Well, there's tons of things, ways to make money. You can do it through um, giving speeches. That's again, that's personal time and uh-huh. energy. Yeah. So that's yeah. kind of like the left side of our cash flow quadrant. But when you want investments that make money, of course, stocks and mutual funds and bonds, those all cu- qualify as income producing assets, uh-huh. right? I know those aren't what you want to talk about. You want to talk about real estate. No, 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 no. Part. I do want to talk about it. But, but, but look, I, 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 at and only wants to pay me every quarter. Right. And that's right, and and so with a dividend. Yeah, that doesn't you know you what you do makes you still able to sleep at night. Some people, yeah. you know, they don't want to get involved in real estate because they it makes them too nervous. Yeah, then don't do it. But uh-huh. if you really want to get ahead, you know, and when people, when financial planners drive me nuts when they say diversification because they mean diversified against uh, across stocks and bonds. Uh-huh. That's not diversification. Uh-huh. I have my gold. I have my real estate. I have my stocks and bonds. Uh-huh. That's diversification. I have businesses that I invest in. I have startups. I have ongoing businesses. That's diversification because when one goes down, I have others that haven't. Mm-hmm. And and okay, are there any other ways for me to to have properties? Like somebody out there just starting, they don't have any money. Uh, they got some debt in college. Should they pay their debt right now? Should they pay their debt out first? That depends. Uh-huh. You're an accountant. You know that's our favorite response. It depends on their yeah. personal situation. If that debt is only costing them two percent, and they don't yeah. have to start paying it off for ten years, probably it's not smart to pay it off now. Right, Use right. your cash flow to invest, invest in other assets. Yeah. So I mean, and my answer would be like, I'm not chasing the past. I made a mistake. Yeah. Too many people borrow money to go to college. You agree yes, with that? I absolutely agree. Should with they that. borrow money to go to college? Um, in most cases, not. Yeah. No, in most should cases, they, I recommend they, not what's because more too many of these kids get out. You're going to get me on another soapbox. That's yeah, a whole yeah. other show. That's fine. Way. I love it. Um, you know, too many kids end up going to school not knowing what they want to do. They're borrowing money. They mm-hmm. graduate with a mortgage with no house. Yeah, exactly. They have a mortgage on their life and yeah, no house. Yeah, yeah. And and they end up getting a liberal arts degree, which is a, nothing wrong with a liberal arts degree, but when your job you get is going to pay you $35,000 a year and you have $200,000 in, in um, might student be, might loans, be a bad return. it's a really bad idea. Yeah. And and it's also an issue about um, people that get married. When one one spouse has no debt and the other one is heavy in debt, you better have that conversation. Sex before better you get be real good. Yeah, exactly. Well, something like that. Yes. You're paying. You're paying in advance. Yeah. So, if you looked like I spent five years in college, I was using drugs every day. Um, I didn't know why, why I was there. I, I mean, I went because my mom said you need to go. Mm-hmm. Basically, her husband said you need to go. The kids need to go to college. And he died. I end up with debt. I don't learn anything can't get a job in the career that, that I studied in. And I look back now and I'm like, would I do that again? Forget the money if it was free. Like if I had to spend five years with no income, does it make sense for somebody to go to college today? It depends. 
Yeah, I'm not going to say yes because I know the situation. Yeah. It depends who they are yeah. and how dedicated they are to uh -huh. what they want to learn. Now, I this week I talked to a young gal. She's been in college for 10 years because mm -hmm. she hasn't figured out what she wants to 10 do. 10 years 10 in college. years. You know, it's like, whoa, wait a minute, baby. It's time for you to grow up. Time to get yourself out there. Yeah. But, you know, I want people to look at what the quality of the education they want. Yeah. Not everybody needs to go to college. But... Having gone to college, the stats are still there that people have college degrees over their lifetime make more money than those who don't. Mm -hmm. Now, as an entrepreneur, more and more universities are starting entrepreneurship programs, so it makes me happy. Um, but they're also they're, most of them are still not bringing in entrepreneurs to teach them. Right. So you have professors teaching entrepreneurship. That you know, my I have concern over that. Yeah. So entrepreneurship, there's this a mindset. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know how somebody teaches me something that they've never done themselves. Like they're terrified. There's a lot of people stuff. out there doing it, and not oh, just oh. not just in colleges. Oh no, you're right. There's no, people out there online. in our circuit. Online, no, no doubt about that it. They're out there saying how to build a business, and they have two employees. Yes. Sharon Lecter, Think and Grow Rich for Women. Think and Grow Rich, Three Feet of Gold. Save wisely and spend happily. Outwitting the Devil. That's a deal. That's a uh, uh, Napoleon Hill book. Okay. <laughs> She was the CEO of Rich Dad Poor Dad for 10 years, sold 26 million books. Her website's SharonLector.com. I'm going to be doing more stuff with Sharon, I guarantee you. We're going to do some big things together. Uh, I have a passion for educating people about what's going on economically. Me and her are going to sit down and argue about a few things. <laughs> Uh, if you, how, how can people get in contact with you? SharonLector.com. Okay. Can they write you? Can they email you? Absolutely. Sharon at SharonLector.com. Okay. If you want to see more Sharon, hit me in comments. If you have a question for her, something you want to know, maybe some gig she can speak at. She's mm -hmm. awesome. She's got a lot of power, a lot of integrity, very com commonsensical. Okay. I really appreciate you being here. I learned like you reinforce a lot of what 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 I believe, and launching a whole new initiative, playing big, be number one in when, your when field. When does that come? When does playing big come out? Um, it, within the next couple of months. Okay, yeah. we'll yeah. do a podcast one night. All right, super. Uh, remind that. everybody. Thank you so much. Thank right. you. Okay. Wonderful. Hey, look forward to you being here. If you know somebody in power, somebody doing well, somebody that's the real deal and not the woo woo, um, like Sharon. Uh, come see me over at Power Woo-woo like Sharon? No, no, not like Sharon. Sharon's not woo-woo. Okay, Sharon's a real deal. This is a real deal. Very common sense. One, two, three should equal something, okay? Thanks a lot for watching today. Hey, it's Ted McGrath with Message to Millions. Do you want to create a presentation online that actually gets clients? That's the big problem that we all face, right? People are launching stuff online all day long and they're not converting more sales, getting more customers and making a difference in the world. So I got something for you here. 26 point framework. If you wanna do videos that sell, webinars that sell, I've tested this for the last six years in my business. I've sold millions of dollars worth of products and services online and grab it down below for free. It's called the ultimate online presentation swipe file. You swipe it and there's literally 26 points on how to create a presentation with examples for each step of how I do mine. So webinars where they're not seeing your face or video where you're face to camera, they're watching you smile and you're smiling because sales are coming in all day long. Click that link, grab the gift, tell me what you think about it and I will see you soon inside the gift. To learn more information, visit presentationswipefile.com. Are you tired of buying ads? How much would five times more visitors from search engines like Google or Bing do for your business? Link Research Tools helps you increase that free organic traffic. We have offerings to get your business to become the dominant force on the internet. The secret of internet traffic is what we give you. We convert that traffic into cash flow for your business. Learn more at linkedresearchtools.com. That's linkresearchtools.com and sign up now. The number one franchising development company in the world is looking for the most qualified and those interested in increasing their cash flow through franchise. With 10 years of expertise, Robert and Sue Bennett have built a system that is unlike any other. Get up and running in 90 days with your franchise and take your idea and dream and spread it around the world. To get started, visit FranFinders.com. That's FranFinders.com today.
If you have a business and are looking for a merger or acquisition, business valuation, or capital to grow your business, whether you're needing private equity, industry-based buyers, or just want to sell your business, Stanton Park Capital will take care of you. With over 18 years of experience, Stanton Park is the best resource for mergers and acquisitions, business valuation, and private equity capital. Learn more and get started right now with StantonParkLLC.com. That's StantonParkLLC.com. If you want to experience the best car wash on the planet, Cheetah Clean offers the world's fastest car wash VIP experience from start to finish. Get in and get out in 90 seconds. The owners get involved, everyone is involved, from extreme detailing to the finest details to getting you the best experience when it comes to your car, your most prized possession. Check out what we have to offer in your local area today. Learn more at cheetahclean.com. That's cheetahclean.com.